You're listening to Sound Bites, a youth-based radio program that hopes to expand your knowledge of the everyday ingredient, food. I'm Sierra Pontier. Every year around this time, my dad and I go through the same process. Hey dad, can we plant a garden? Uh, sure. Where, uh, where do you want to plant it? Can we plant it in our backyard? I don't know why not. Why don't we go find a spot? Three months later... Hey dad, what happened to the tomatoes? But this year, I have a feeling that our luck is going to change. Because I have done my research. And it should be no surprise that we were doing everything wrong. From the type of soil we were using, to the amount of water we were giving the plants, to the location we chose to plant our garden, we had created an amazing recipe for a compost pile. So to help me understand the proper way to create my own edible garden, I met with Darren Eng, the manager at Armstrong Garden Centers in Torrance, California, who comes from a family with three generations of gardening knowledge. My grandpa started a business in the 1920s, and then my father and then me. So I grew up in greenhouses. I actually grew up with the plants as a young kid. I used to weed uh, underneath the benches in the greenhouses where all the spiders lived. I was a salesman at like 11 or 12 years old, helping people uh, pick out their plants, and then I owned my own chain of garden centers for a while, and then I've been working with Armstrong Garden Center for about two years here in California. Living in Southern California, we are fortunate to have a mild climate that allows us to plant and harvest year-round. But whether you live on the West Coast or the East Coast, March and April are the best times to plant, because the soil is still moist from all the winter rains, but it's also warm enough to give the plants the nutrients they need from the sun. Now, that doesn't mean you can plant pumpkins just yet, but it does mean you can begin to grow all the fruits and vegetables characteristic of summer, like string beans, corn, cucumber, and my favorite, tomatoes. Tomatoes are huge right now, um, all different kinds. And the great thing about tomatoes is there's hundreds of varieties. We've got um, just your regular hybrid tomatoes uh, that get the big, nice, red, juicy tomatoes, like the early girls and the big boys and the champions. These are all good slicing hamburger tomatoes. We also have the heirloom tomatoes. Those are tomatoes that are over 50 years old, been passed down from generation to generation. They're open pollinated tomatoes, meaning that they haven't been cross pollinated with something else. So they have very, very good flavors. Um, so those are very big right now and they come in all colors. I mean, you can get yellow ones and purple ones and black ones and striped ones and white ones and, and red ones. These are all your heirloom tomatoes, your old fashioned ones that a lot of the uh, the pioneers and a lot of the, the immigrants that came across from all over Europe and Asia would bring different seeds into our country. A common misconception is that gardening is time consuming and labor intensive. I mean, it is if you plan on feeding an entire village, but if you just want a nice little pot full of fresh herbs and tomatoes, it's actually quite simple. We all want that green thumb and the way we get it is our soil preparation. If you can take your hand and just slide it down in the earth right where, before you're going to plant all the way up to your thumb you've got a green thumb so we teach people that there's five basic steps the first step being soil preparation you have to prepare your soil well soils here in southern california aren't that great we need to add to them and we do that by adding mulches uh, planting compost planting compost is or a flower and vegetable planting mix these are great things you can mix all into the soil 50 percent the planting mix 50 percent the soil you have that makes for a great soil before you plant these gardens. The second step to a bountiful garden is planting healthy, strong plants. If you buy plants from an unreliable provider that look wilted and malnourished at the store, you're starting two steps behind before they even make it to your yard. Step number three is make sure you're watering. Most people have an issue with watering at, f at first. These plants, whenever you plant a new plant into soil, that soil will suck the moisture out of that new plant, just like a sponge. Even if the soil you plant them in is wet, it will still suck the moisture out of the plant. So make sure you're watering very, very deeply after you plant anything new. That also means watering your plants in a consistent time frame. In Southern California, a lot of people struggle with cracking tomatoes when the skin splits before they're harvested. This condition comes from inconsistent watering. There might be one hot day when the tomatoes dry out and people freak out and dump 100 gallons of water on them. The problem with this is your tomatoes go from hot to cold, hot to cold, and the inside of the tomatoes expands faster than the skin can grow, causing them to crack. But if your plants are watered on a consistent basis, usually two to three times a week in the spring and three to four times a week in the summer, 
they will be resilient when that hot spill does hit. The other thing about it is, is a lot of people will overwater as much as over underwatering. That's almost as big of a problem as underwatering. And what happens when a plant gets overwatered is it starts wilting. It's not bad to let your tomato plant start wilting a little bit. You know, you don't want them to wilt a lot, and you don't want them to wilt for a day or two there because then you're going to run into problems. But that is a good indication of when to water is when you start seeing a little bit of wilting on the plants. Then go out there and soak them in really, really good, and then let them get to the wilting, almost to a wilting stage again when the soil is kind of getting dry to the touch. You don't want that soil to stay wet all the time because that takes oxygen out of the root system. Step number four is feeding your plants. We're humans. We need to be fed, correct? If we don't eat, uh, we get sick, we get diseases, we need minerals, we need vitamins, we need food, protein. Your plants are the same way. They need to be fed, so you got to fertilize. Each bag of fertilizer has three numbers on it. One each for nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. Nitrogen makes plants green. Potassium builds strong roots. But the most important number on the bag is phosphorus. Phosphorus is the nutrient that makes plants bloom, and blooms turn into fruits and vegetables. So for edible gardening, look for fertilizers with high counts of all three, but especially high counts of phosphorus. In order to get good tomato production, you need a lot of those little yellow blossoms. The little yellow blossoms on tomatoes are where the tomato, the fruit, is going to come from. If you don't get those yellow blossoms, you're not going to get tomatoes. And you get those yellow blossoms by fertilizing. You know, high phosphorus fertilizer will give you those yellow blossoms. Then there's not enough bees anymore in our yards. Bees are necessary to pollinate those yellow blossoms in order to get the tomatoes. So you can be a bee yourself. You can take a, and get a, like a watercolor paintbrush, a little 59 cent watercolor paintbrush. And once a week dry, go out there like on a, on a Saturday morning or something and touch each yellow blossom with a dry watercolor paintbrush. And uh, what you're basically doing is being a bee. You're pollinating the tomatoes. You know, and, and you can go be the bee and make sure that they get pollinated. And then you will set like 80% of those blossoms into tomatoes instead of 10 or 20%. Because there's just not enough bees to pollinate those tomatoes well. And the fifth and final step is just maintenance. Go out into your yard once every week or two and see what's going on. Make sure your plants are watered, but not overwatered. Make sure they're not getting attacked by aphids, which, by the way, ladybugs are very good at getting rid of. And most importantly, just have fun with it. Even if you don't have a, a plot of land, get yourself a couple of buckets, a couple of pots, and try some of this. You know, you can get online and you can research um, some of the tomatoes, some of the heirloom tomatoes and where they come from. And, you know, I've done a lot of that, and it's fun to go and pick, you know, one that's called Mortgage Lifter um, because of an old man that, you know, in the 1930s Depression era came up with his own tomato, and he was able to sell enough of that to pay off his house in six years to pay off his mortgage. So he named it Mortgage Lifter. I mean, they come with all different fun names. So I would suggest, you know, finding out about some of these old tomatoes and try uh, vegetable gardening, even from a young age. Um, it's something that you can use for the rest of your life. For more delicious stories and my recipe for some spring-inspired meals, visit us at openorchardproductions.org.